Got the old gallon challenge here, the old jug of water. Let me get a little sip -a -roo. All right, folks. So, um, obviously, a lot of progress made yesterday. Um, uh, no, it was actually earlier today, this morning at 7 in the morning. Um, what we did was kind of build some of the the uh, page in everything, or at least the landing page, and we integrated Clerk with the um, front end, and I just did some basic configurations. It was just a URL thing, like a sign after sign out URL, you just literally put the route that you want. So that's when the sign out happens. I do need to configure when the um, sign in happens though, and I do have a solution for it. So I'm gonna integrate that. I do have to go to my M file, my .emv local, so you can see that we are here. And then if I sign out, you'll see that, boom, we just stay on this page. Last episode, we were getting redirected to clerks um, sign in. Let me pull the mic closer. I need to adjust this microphone. Um, it's too far, too far away in the corner. I need it, I need it all the way over yonder so I can kind of lean straight up. I feel like I'm always, always like hunched over trying to um, um, kind of talk and stuff. But let me get to the clerk dashboard real quick. I need to do that. Say clerk docs, um, next JS. And let me pop this over here real quick. Sorry guys, need to respect the privacy and get the M files configured. I think this should work, but I was having problems with it when I first, um, first tried to do it. So let's see if it works. If I go ahead and continue with Google, let's see, sign in with pagsmanagement.com at Gmail. And I think, I think, uh, oh, I need to clerk after sign in, I see. I didn't actually write the correct route there, but I do think it worked because it did redirect to the backslash route, which is um, which is what we want. At least it's working right, but we actually wanted to redirect to the dashboard. So you can see my LinkedIn in the background, which is just great. Um, let me go ahead and sign in again, Google. And boom, bada bing. Let's see if it works. Sign in, ooh, didn't work. So I'm gonna crash the server and try it one more time. And today I do want to get the layout configured because um, that would be nice if we can kind of get the, the bird's eye view of our application kind of structured, structured, excuse me. Um, then, then we're kind of dealing with kind of seeing the thing starting to, to work as an orchestra together. So let's sign in, let's try it one more time. Go ahead and sign in. I don't know why we're over here with the provider now. I'll have to, um, I'm sure it has something to do with the sign in and sign up components. Like maybe they just need to be wrapped. Oh, sweet, it worked. So we got redirected. I don't know if you guys see it on the back page while I'm kind of typing this, but we did get redirected correctly to the dashboard. So after signing in, we did um, do what we need to do. So I'm just going to, um, wrap these sign in and sign up uh, uh, clerk components. With a div, just uh, flex, you know, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and go back to localhost. Let's sign out. Let's try it one more time now with our, our new wrappers around the, um, still it popped over there, so interesting, okay. Well, I'll look into it. That's not a, a mission critical thing. I think the mission critical thing now is to, um, let's go ahead and look at our task probably. I mean, right away, I, I can already tell you that we, we just need the sidebar organized so we can kind of navigate the application. So I do believe we have it layout next JS. Um, I looked into it. All I could best find at least um, all I could best find was just a wrapping the pages that you're on 
which I didn't want to do. I wanted to have some sort of layout component. And um, how do I explain this? I, I still wanted to have, um, um, you know what I mean? I, I just didn't want to make it like a wrapper that I have to add to each page. I want to have it be, let me close all of this stuff real quick. I wanted something on my page, right? Excuse me, not, not my page, but my, my base. Will this delete everything? No, so I'm, I'm kind of unfamiliar with how Next is routing everything because I think it's like routing it to here or something or to this layout. Because I, I imagine that should delete all of what we're looking at, but it's not. So this should be like a white file in my mind where there's no layout. But it looks like that's only associated to the app, the landing page. And if I go ahead and go to the dashboard, if I delete that, that should work, right? But where's the dashboard being rendered is what I'm, is what I'm wondering. Because that's where I want to wrap all of these layouts and stuff. I, I don't want to, I, the thing I don't want to do is just wrap each page. I know I know I easily, like we easily could do that and it just solves the problem. But I'm looking for more of a robust solution here where I don't have to keep track of the problem. So that's one layout. Let me just delete this layout folder then. Ah, so, okay. I thought that was where it was rendering. So it's routed through something and I need to find that something. Um, is it the server component? No. Assets app. I, I would figure it's the app. I, I really would. I would figure doing that would delete it. But if we go back to the Kanban, I'm sure it's gone now. So I'm wondering why they're separated and why the pages are being routed somewhere. So I put it back. It should get us back. Okay, let's go to the dashboard. Great. Um, okay, I will build a layout wrapper then just for the time being. I do have the next um, documentation up right here. So with TypeScript, let's see what it says for layouts, page layout. Looks like we just literally pull it in for a, and then what's the nested layout? Components, nested layout, okay. Yeah, so the re the, what I'm trying to do is basically there should be some sort of router, right? Well, I guess, I guess technically this is a, it's just a layout as well that's wrapping the children. But now that I'm questioning this, where do we get the root layout? And if I go to page... We'll see, return page.tsx. Let's see where we get and pull that in. And the root clerk provider body HTML. I would figure it would be here. The point I'm trying to say is I could, I could then just have the layout be here and even conditionally render. Let's say we have different layouts because we do have different layouts. We have like the, the layout of the landing page and then we can have like a private layout right i know it says late lap out or something but we could have a private private layout and then a custom layout and and render based on the route we're in or, or based on which routes are public or something like that so we don't have to keep track of of the layouts because I, I don't want to wrap every page in a wrapper um that's not to me, the best solution. I feel like the best solution would be to um, have default layout .tsx. We'll just we'll just go ahead and do that then for now. Um, so default layout. But I guess, I guess there's ten ways to cut the cake. You know what I mean? So.
But um, I just the the thing I wanted to avoid was obviously making it a recurring thing that I have to keep track of because I I just don't want to. Um, but not the end of the world. We'll we'll pop it in here for now, and then I'll import the base sidebar. And this this is where our layout will be. So I hope this kind of makes sense. Is this is where all of our content is, and then we'll have the sidebar to the left of it. Right now it's going to be on top, but if I do flex. Um, this is where we can kind of control all of our in-app, um, and maybe I'll call it that, in-app layout. Instead of default layout, it'll be in-app dot layout, I guess. And if I go to my pages, I can just go ahead and pop this in. Wait, which page is this? I think this is the home page. We don't want it there. Let's get rid of our task page. Let's just close everything out. Collapse everything, clean up our thing. We want it in our Kanban in our in our dashboard. We want both those. So we'll say in app layout, perfect. And we will just wrap the entire file with this. And you can see it's it's already starting to work, which is awesome. So we just need to obviously do some configuration here. So maybe with that full men height screen and background. Uh, it was background primary, I believe, just to get our entire application doing the right thing. And then, of course, sidebar looks like our texts are not white. So let's just go ahead and clean that up. So hello, don't really need that there. We we're just popping that there to. And this is awesome. So we don't have a. Um, um, a products page yet, but we can at least navigate between our Kanban page and our dashboard page. So I, I hope I hope that kind of is is coming together and making sense for people. I think I think building the um, the uh, sidebar now is probably an appropriate time to do such. And I can probably um, let's see wrap this in a div. So with full there, and then I can also say um, class name with full as well here, because I want them to take up their full spaces. I don't want to have, do you see how the, the sidebar kind of readjust when the Kanban page happens? So I that's what I don't want. I, I want it to be kind of this hard coded thing. So maybe we could say uh, 10 twelfths. And this can be two twelfths of the width. So they're always going to be the same, should always be the same size in theory. Um, obviously, they're not right now. So maybe we'll add some flex, flex call, see what we can do. Um, I just, I don't want it all adjusting like that. So we'll say with full, let's... Uh, See what that kind of does. And and I, I guess I guess it'd be an appropriate time to make a wrapper as well for the page content. So I basically want the content to always be a fixed size. So, so there, there's a fair amount of work we need to do on the front end right here. Um, let me go ahead and, and look into the, uh, what's it called, the sidebar here. I want to do the user button again. No clerk context found. So that's kind of where I'm I'm wondering how to do this. So I'm gonna go back to clerk's docs and I'm going to pop in these things from clerk, clerk provider, clerk enter. And we do need the sidebar and I'm going to pull in the metadata for our wrapper. We'll see if this works. I, I'm kind of shooting in, in the dark here because we have this like root layout situation and oh don't want that don't want that so maybe this will work fingers crossed um export default function root layout we got the children children node I, I would imagine this this works or should work, right? A 
okay, let's crash the server, try to run it one more time. And basically I, I wanna have, and it might be a middleware issue as well where we have to allow this route or something. But I guess I'm just, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with how the routing is, is kind of being handled as a whole. Let's see if this works. No, because it looks like this is coming from the app page. So can I just store all of my can, if I put Kanban over here, will the route still be accessible? If I just say backslash Kanban, because if that's the case, then I'll just, I'll just stick all the pages over there but I just, I don't understand why the slash page works here, but then the Kanban doesn't, for instance. So we have some, some architecture kind of things I'm, I'm unfamiliar with and next or not as competent in, but at the same time, it makes sense that there's a pages directory in the, the next application knows to um, route the Kanban, right? So the question then becomes is which layout are we, are we kind of using? Cause I, I I'm, I'm thoroughly confused on that. I, I have no idea. Obviously we're using the in-app layout right now. So if I just get rid of the clerk provider and go to the sidebar and remove the user button, we should see everything's fine. And we're in our in-app kind of feel, you know? Um, and I guess, I guess I could add a landing page route or something, right? Like home, just to show us that we can we can kind of navigate the whole application right now. So we have boom over here, but hydration failed because initial UI does not match what's rendered on the server. Okay, so body in app layout component stack. Okay, this is good. This is good to know. There's three errors here dealing with hydration. So we come to the Kanban page, it's there. And then we go to the home, go to dashboard. Hydration failed because initial UI does not match what was rendered on the server. So this might be some, um, some sort of server side props and stuff, or, or I know React has their, their server side components. And this is what I'm, I'm learning, right? This is something I, I have to kind of become competent in and grow to be better at. Warning expected HTML tag, div and a div. Let's see what it says. Hydration problem, return file path, data with, okay, this seems like a different thing. Um, So this is, this is definitely going to be associated to the routing and, and something to do with the server. The question is just where is the, where does the app get rendered after it goes out of page or not, um, not page, but out of this layout. Cause this layout is over here, right? So if I delete this, boom, it's all gone, right? If I add stuff to this layout, right? If I want to say, here's our sidebar. And I guess, I guess maybe I could do it here, but the problem is, um, well, it's at the bottom right now, but not a big deal, right? Like basically I, I understand how that works. What I don't understand is when I now log in, where does my layout go to? Cause it's still following this rough layout, this rough idea. Let's just refresh it. Let the hydration happen. Oh, okay. There's still. some sort of issues. Okay. So this is a little bit of debugging, right? This is, 
might be a bit of a boring thing, but um, obviously integral to the navigation of the application. And it's, it's probably something simple. It's, it's always something simple, right? I bet I'm going to figure it out. It's just when, when you don't know how something works kind of under the hood, it's, it's always going to be a bit of a, a hassle. So I'm going to just um, start asking Stack Overflow how to set up layouts in Next.js. Um, a visual guide to set up Next.js 13. Let's see. So it looks like we have our app and then our pages each need to have their own layout. Which kind of makes sense. Feature product, header, footer, but where do the header and footer belong? I believe in the layout. Layouts in Next.js. So what are we exactly layouts? Boom, boom, boom. To prevent redundancy and reusability. To create a layout, we need to define a React component that exports default file name layout.js or layout.tsx. Okay, so if you're using TypeScript, so we need to rename our layout. Yes, change that. Maybe that'll already help us. With the hydration issues? Potentially. In-app layout. Okay, let's uh, let's pop over there. In-app layout to, oh, not that layout. We want the other layout. Clerk provider, we just want layout. Oh, you know what? This wasn't even exported. Export default, right? Maybe that was all of our issues right there. Potentially. Potentially. Metadata. Okay, what is this issue saying? You are attempting to export metadata. Okay, maybe we don't need metadata here. Get rid of it. No problem. No sweat off my back. Hydration still. Okay, so let's get back to reading. Um, single shared layout component. If you, well, hold on, we skipped a little. Oh, this wasn't actually what we wanted. This is what we wanted. Okay, so to create a layout, we need to define a React component, exports default file named layout.js or TSX if you're using TypeScript. This component should accept children props, props, excuse me, which will be populated with the content of the child page during rendering. This way, the child page becomes part of the layout and we can design a consistent UI around it. Makes sense to me. So we have app and layout.tsx. Okay, so with create, boom, boom, create next app, which automatically generates a special file called layout in the app folder. This file serves as a topmost layout. Okay, so I understand that. Is the pages not in the correct position then? Am I not using the pages properly? So do I need to have, oh, you know what? This is probably how, how the pages are supposed to be. So you put the, the Kanban in here and I bet, I bet you name this page.tsx and I probably don't need a pages directory. So then I can use the layout, right? Associated. Um, let's see, update all the imports. Yes, sir. Do that, do that. And let's see, let's see if that fixes our Kanban page at the very least. It might, it might. Use effect. Um, let's get rid of this sidebar for a sec. Going to run dev here. Sometimes you just need to crash the server and get it back up and running. And I, I really feel like it's a simple thing. Like it's, it's just me not having um, the, the depth of knowledge with, with next uh, JS. So let's see if styles fix that. What is this import? No. 
styles there we go okay and then import globals.css okay so that should fix that issue and we have a use effect you're importing a component that needs use effect it only works okay let's just comment this out I just want to see if this routing works. That's literally it. Let's put ASDF here. So it did work. I did see it for a hot second. Kanban. There it is. So the whole time I didn't know how um, the page routing works. And to still some degree, I, I'm trying to understand how these server components work. You're importing a, it, it only works in a client component, but none of its parents are marked with use client. Let's, um, let's try, let's just try to say use client. So it'll be client side for this component. Air source. Okay. So this, this is probably how the routing was supposed to work. That's my fault. I, I definitely set it up thinking that, um, I needed like a pages directory and maybe you can make it work that way too. page.tsx and this will be my dashboard page. But this keeps it easy then. At least at least now we can go ahead and do the and I'll go ahead and say use client at the top of this screen and this makes it really easy for me or at least it should um, because I can just import the sidebar here basically steal this wrapper div and pop it around not around the body but actually in the body and above the child component and maybe i'll need to wrap that but that should get us our sidebar just like that so now we can go home we still have the sidebar here, so we'll have to figure that out in a sec, but let's go to the dashboard. And, um, oh, of course, we're gonna have some globals issues. Our dashboard page needs to, I believe it's just dot, dot, slash here. Should fix that error, potentially. Nice, okay, so we're in our dashboard. We can then go back home. We can redirect, go to the dashboard, come on. We can go to our Kanban. Should be able to go to our Kanban page at least. Let's see what's going on there. Remove child. Ooh. So we, we are getting some interesting Next.js kind of errors here. Shouldn't be. I feel like we shouldn't be. I feel like it should just be already rendered. Because it because it's getting delivered on the client, right? So layouts, um, so, and, and this is just server side rendering that, that I need to um, understand more about like the routing and why I can go to the Kanban sometimes, but not, but if I refresh it, it's obviously gonna work. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with being an asynchronous server side component. So, let me Google routing with Next.js components. Pre-built Next.js templates. Nice. Oh, my, my stomach is rumbling. I just worked out right before this, so I'm, I'm pretty hungry. Um, but so I can go to the dashboard page and it's happening when I, when I go to the base column. So I think it's because they're, they're fetching data from the server and they're not rendered quite yet. Um, so what I could do is do some sort of loader, right? So, and this, this is just assuming that, um, and I'll actually, I should probably handle it in the component, but let's just see if this will work. And I'll just do a timeout for now. Set loading, first it'll start on false. And then we'll have, um, 
set timeout on load. Well, we actually need to wrap this in a use effect. We just want it to run just on page load. And it really shouldn't be a set timeout. What it needs to be is, is an await call. But we are just going to set loading to false. Actually, it needs to start on true. So it's going to be loading, 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 loading. And then after, let's say, two seconds, loading will be true. So let's go ahead and say loading and and, or it'll actually be one of these. And let's delete some of these columns just for the time being. And it'll render the column when it's done loading, but until then it'll just say loading. So let's see if this works. So if I go to dashboard, go to Kanban, loading, 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 render the column. If I go back to dashboard, no. Okay, so it's something to do not with the component being mounted on the DOM, which is good to at least figure that out. I think it's something to do with um, something I don't know about, right? Which is gonna be the maybe server-side components or server-side rendering stuff. Or maybe just how it's routed or I, I'm, I'm unsure. But the good news is we do have the layout um, and I can go ahead and delete the layouts folder because we'll just stick to this layout. We don't need layouts. Where is that being rendered in the page? Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. We don't need the base column in the Kanban page either. Was that why we were having a bug? Oh, you know what? Maybe that was why. Was we were just having some issues there. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's a simple bug then and um, not something we need to be overly concerned with. Let me just pop in this tasks over here. And how do I do next routing with pages? Visual guide. So if, so if I want to get the task ID, do I just pop this into tasks? In task ID, just like that, and that should still maintain that uh, route. Should that still work? 405, that page is not found. Okay, or do I need to do what I did, which is kind of this and say tasks. And then what do we do for sign up and sign in? Page.tsx. I, I am I'm liking Next a lot more, I will say. It is growing on me. Um, the one thing that I will say is this nested uh, kind of folder structure, something I'm, I'm not necessarily the biggest, biggest fan of. I think it's um, I think it's redundant and maybe something that doesn't necessarily need to be. I don't know if, if there's a way around it. I th I think that would be probably smarter. Oh, I did want to update all the imports for that. And maybe there is. Maybe maybe before I hop down next JS and say, hey y'all y'all are wild, right? Maybe maybe I'll. Um, I'll, I'll do a little research first. I do need to learn humility, I think a little bit more. Um, but I, I thought this would kind of work if I did um, something like this, like task ID, because that would be the param or, or no, no, that's the route path. So if I say task and then say task ID here, right? That should kind of work. And do I need to get the parameter? Task ID, where's the router.query? So that would be changed. So I, I need to either name it task ID or ID, I think. So if I say task and task one, doesn't work, does not work. Let me, let me relaunch the server, see if it has something to do with that. Sometimes it's simple things like that, you know, it really is. 
Um, but I'm, I'm also not too concerned on the task situation because this was actually something we just needed to see if we can query single task, which we did do. So I'll get back to the, the mission here, which is dealing with the layout and the sidebar. And then we'll, we'll use that endpoint on the Kanban page. We don't actually need that endpoint. Um, but what I do need is to know how do I, how do I find which route I'm currently on? How do I know which route I am currently on in Next.js? And I'm sure there's some sort of Next router that you can probably get to. Let's see, in Next.js, you can determine the current route by saying use router from Next router. That's awesome. So import use router from Next router. And I imagine it's probably const router. You probably invoke it, right? And um, let's say router dot path name, maybe. No, okay, let's see what it says. Oh, you know what? It says to invoke it here. Okay, let's see if that works. You have a server component that imports next router, use next navigation instead. Okay, so we'll say use navigation. Use router from next navigation. Okay, is that is that what they kind of mean? Let's see. Router dot. Let's see what options we have to pay router dot prefetch oh okay next navigation is not what we want though we want we do want the router because i do i do want to see where i'm currently at so const router maybe i can console log it kind of pop that up on to our air let's see Internal server error, React server component. You have a server component that imports next router, use, use navigation instead. Okay, so I really need to understand these server components because seems like it's a, gonna be a reoccurring theme here. Is it in the next folder potentially? Server, app, pages. No, I don't want to get into all that. Page.js. No, don't want to get into all that either. Let's see, let's see. But so basically the goal is to conditionally render whether there should be a sidebar or not. I guess I don't have to do it by using route. What I could do is check if there's a user as well, but then they can, they can actually work around it by, um, if they went back to the landing page, they would see the sidebar, which is not what I want to do. I think that's an ugly, Display. So I, I would I would like to have it rendered basically basically on um, on the route, right? I feel like I should be able to do that. So let me. Um, I think my computer's slowing down a little bit because I I do have a lot going on. Uh, let's see. Current route. Use current route. This is what, it's what chat Jipita says, but again, we're running into that issue of having a use router on something that I guess you're not supposed to be using the router. So let's think, let's think how to approach this because this is important, right? We obviously want our dashboard there where, um, and let's uh, let's get the page content. I do want to build this wrapper as well that will be kind of 
maybe maybe I guess in in spirit of this maybe I could build a wrapper around the pages to handle this I, I guess I guess maybe we will go with that because that would um, that would handle all of this problem so if I actually go back to layout um, and we'll say in app dot layout dot tsx export function function in app layout accepts children and children are going to be react uh, what was it react dot node I believe something like that right for default. Oh, it's React, React node. Okay. So like that, and we'll import the base sidebar. Give it some fragments for now. And this is where the children can live. So we'll wrap them. Okay, what is going on? Why is it why is it giving me some weird oh I see. Don't need that. So the the sidebar will live up here, base sidebar. And they need to be flexed from each other. And this is where the children will live. And now I can use this wrapper. The reason why I opted for this now, I guess where it makes sense in my brain is because this wrapper right here can actually be the wrapper that I'm talking about to hold the content. And if we just have an in-app layout, I'll just wrap it around the pages because I was gonna use the base wrapper to wrap the page content anyways. That I was planning on doing, but this actually does two birds and one stone and at least gets us around the problem that, that um, I was experiencing as well. So I think, I think it should. So if we import um, in app, oh, not a object, but in app layout, just like this. So the whole application should be wrapped with this. Every, every page that we want can be wrapped with this. And if I'm not mistaken, there might actually be a, um, gosh, this is just great. We came up with a solution. I, I like that, I really do. Um, but there, there might actually be another page on the design. I think the settings page where the layout does change. So this isn't a horrible solution, actually. I'm actually kind of a fan of it right now. Um, I think it's, I think it's solves the problem right now. So let's see. So we have, this is one layout, right? The layout's just the orientation of the web app. This is another layout. Um, obviously we can have the sidebar kind of like expand or shrink. And then I think we had a different layout here where we kind of have this like top bar nav. That's kind of a new thing that seems to be part of the layout. Oh, it's, it's also in the notifications. So, so maybe it is kind of page based layout, which, which does work then, or at least somewhat gets us around the problem. So we can go to our Kanban should take us to the Kanban page, but it's not, it's not routing us right now, which I'm wondering why. Let's take a look at our sidebar. So routes, next link. If we go home, okay, we can home, we can go to the dashboard, awesome. Then Kanban, looks like we have some loading issues, so we're gonna definitely load the columns and do some skeleton loaders and stuff until they're in there because I don't want it to be like um, and then I, I it should it shouldn't actually load every time it should only be fetched one the data should only be fetched one time inside of the task manager or like on the page load or something like maybe when a, a person's signing up and stuff this is kind of what I did on on the um, honeydew uh, or the project I'm, I'm working on for a company. I, I have a loader pop up that's like really pretty when someone signs into the application. And what I'm actually doing is like fetching stuff all behind the scenes and putting stuff where it needs to go and passing that data around so you get a quicker in-app experience. Um, 
where this should this should automatically if if it's loaded once it should automatically stay here it shouldn't do you see how it like jumps kind of shouldn't be doing that so um but the good news is we do have we do have our our rough um thing and i don't like how it it resizes as well so let's let's deal with some of that stuff here that's going to be with our layout component So this needs to be class name and it should always be with full. Even if there's nothing in there, it should still take up the same width. Um, so if we hard code it, let's say with full and maybe we go to the base sidebar and give this width a like a pixel value or something, right? Of like 200 pixels. It should never change. It should always be the same content width, but obviously we're experiencing some issues here. So if I don't do any width here, what would that do? This is what it needs to be, is just like consistently the same size. And let me build just a projects page real quick so we can, we can navigate that projects and I'll say page.tsx. Oh, I also took time to build this component template I should be using in React. So I could say projects page, boom, awesome. And we should have a new component already rendered here. Let's just refresh the server, get everything back over there, projects, okay, awesome. And we just need to import now our app layout. So in app layout, let's wrap the application. Just pop it in here, that's fine. And we should get all of our stuff that we need. So, oh, and the reason why it's not um, rendering this is because we aren't importing our global styles. So boom, now it should be there. And it is, so we have our dashboard page, we have our Kanban page, and our projects page. So we can we can route to all three and go back to home where it just, it looks pretty, it's done. Literally our home component outside of the height thing from last episode, it's done. So that's kind of fun. Today was a bit of a struggling thing, but, but we ultimately got there. We got the sidebar layout working, figured out maybe I could study a little bit on server components. And I'm, I'm not gonna wrap the episode up quite yet um, I do want to do a few things. So I just wanted the project thing just so we have a third thing, thing to kind of click on. Um, but I do want to kind of finalize a little bit more of this sidebar thing. Because now if I pop in the um, user button, I think it still should work because we're using the other layout, right? Aren't we? We are freaking birds hunting with one stone, getting like three birds, guys. This is great. We got the wrapper thing figured out because um, I'm gonna, I was gonna use a wrapper for the content. All the content should have the same padding and kind of width and spacing and stuff. I don't know if you guys see if I go to the projects, like this has no padding, but then I go to the dashboard, there's padding. So the wrapper I want in the in-app layout so the, the wrapper I'm currently having on the dashboard is this, but it really shouldn't come from the dashboard. Same with the background. None of this sh stuff should come from the actual page. This is all that should be in the page right now. All the in-app layout should handle all of that. Um, likewise with the other pages, I don't want anything else to handle kind of those spacing things. I want the layout wrapper to handle all of that which is gonna be this guy. Uh, no, I lied, this guy. The in-app layout wrapper. So the children should all have like a max width of, we'll say, uh, I think it's 1244 pixels is kind of congruent with many things. And we'll say padding um, eight, text white, it should all be white text, right? So now when we look at the projects, do you see how the padding's the same? The thing's the same here, the same here, the same here. It's all, it's all the same padding. And then if we go back home, we're still good. So the reason why I want that is just, just so if, if we ever need to change stuff, 
um, it's, it's all here. It's, it's right here to change. It's not a big deal. And the max width, um, oh, I need to do flex and flex call as well. Flex, flex call and justify center. We'll say item center. So everything exists equal distance, right? And this should kind of, oh, maybe I need margin auto as well. Is that what I need? Margin auto potentially. Basically, I, I, I have a wrapper and I'm going to I'm going to pull up on a new project or an old project, excuse me, where I have let me pull it off screen. I don't want to disclose too much. Of course, it's in view. Um, let me see. Let me see where this wrapper component is. Actually, for, actually it's not going to be a huge deal just to show you structures and stuff. Not um, not the end of the world. Um, okay, so let's go to, oh, gosh, my computer is lagging because I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff right now, but let's see. So here's, here's all my components in this product. There's a few of them, as you can see, um, but it's awesome because when you have, when you have your components built out, you could literally just like, sc like sculpt your application so quickly. Um, but here's what I did, MX0 margin background image i could pass that in max width margin auto this is what i want content wrapper but i don't have any sort of uh content so 1440 is what i actually did margin auto that's what i want is that line and maybe it's the line around it as well. Sorry, my computer's lagging. Um, box border MX0. Kind of this padding that exists around it, but I, I, oh, you know what? I did that for a reason. I did that for a reason. So the reason is, is because I want this, this div around it that is going to expand. So it's always going to take up the full width. Oh, no, class name. And um, we can get out of that. I think this should do it. But the div around it is always going to take up the full width and the div within it is only going to take up the max width. But the div around it, I could center stuff and, and do stuff with it. So let's see if that worked. It didn't. Um, but that's where I actually need to be using flex justify center. I believe all of that stuff in item center. Let's see, let's see. Basically, I just, I want this to stay in the middle when I get really far out here. I want all of these to still be in the middle with like equal padding on the sides or equal space on the sides. So let me, let me just see this real quick. Background red 100. It's exactly what I want, kind of. Oh, but you know what? If this is all within this layout, it might not be doing that. Because this needs to be flex, justify content, center, item center. And this might mess with our other layout on the landing page. Let's see. There we go. So that's, that's what I want to do, but I want the sidebar now to not be affected by this. So maybe, maybe that's not how we do it. But I, I do need this to, oh, how are we gonna do this? Okay, so I go in-app layout. Let me get rid of this wrapper div. Let's see if we can minimize, do it as little as possible. And I'm gonna say background red 100 for right now, just to see where we're at. I want this to take up the full space. So how can I do that? Does this need to be full? Maybe maybe that's what the key. That I think is the key that we're missing. Perfect. Perfect folks. That was the key we were missing. So now when when I go um to resize and get at the really big screen sizes, we're still we're still looking proper and organized. It doesn't get overly distorted. 
right? Does that make sense? So now, now when I go to my Kanban page or my dashboard page, it's all going to be still centered. It'll look like a proper dashboard, but it did mess this up. So we'll have to, um, or maybe it didn't. I just might've messed it up from doing the layout. But yeah, so I need to I need to figure something out here too. Maybe in theory this should kind of do the same thing where these sides stay the same size, but like the content stays in the middle, just the the width of it all grows. So technically I might need a wrapper on this too. Um, but I'm not gonna put it on that main layout wrapper. What I'll probably do is put it on this page, I think. I think that would be a lot more sensible to do. So if if I test this, if I put, um, let me see if this is going to work. I'll put in-app layout just around it just to see if it works. Obviously, the sidebar is going to be there. But if this works, then I'll just, I'll just literally make another in-app layout. But it'll just not have the sidebar if it still does all the things I'm... So it kind of does. It's kind of doing exactly what we need it to do. We just need to remove the padding, I think and somehow make that left side still gray. So let's build another in-app layout. So I'll say public or another layout that's not the in-app layout, but the kind of models it. So I'll say, boom, build that public layout. I've already pasted it, should be going. There it goes. After the old double click, so public layout. And we don't need the sidebar. And when I go to the in-app layout, I'll just say import public layout. And swap this out. Boom. Should be working. Just need to refresh, I'm sure. So I hope I hope this makes sense for people. So so on the massive screen sizes, it still kind of maintains what it's supposed to maintain, right? And let me um, let me go to the public layout. Let's take out the padding. We don't want that on the public. And then we're gonna have to figure out the background gray on the left side. Doesn't look horrible though, but but let's figure out the background gray and maybe maybe we can have that tuck over there. Maybe not though. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's just at least figure out the background gray, and I th I think that'll that'll make it look better. Because in my mind, something looks weird about it right now. Obviously, um, public layout. So how can I make? Should I wrap? wrap the left side with one thing and then the right side with one thing. I'm trying to think how to do this because the public layout ultimately like needs this background. Um, background kind of secondary thing, but then it's going to change the right side, I believe. So that's what we want the left side to look like, but we need the right side to still maintain that, um, that dark coloring. So it's kind of the, making a, a mole pop-up problem where we hit one and the other mole pops up, right? That's kind of kind of what we just did here is just pass the problem to the other side. <laughs> it's a little bit like front-end and back-end engineering. It's just, well, we'll let front-end deal with it. Well, we'll let back-end deal with it, right? But we don't want to do that. We want to find a solution for this. And maybe the solution is just a simple... Um, let me wrap this whole thing in a div might be a bit of a cheeky solution, but we'll just um, make this div class name men height screen and width full. And um, it'll be background, 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 primary. And then maybe we could do the same thing over here to, I guess, balance it out. Or secondary, excuse me. 
and boom, bada bing, folks. I think I think that's gonna work. And then I'll have it. Um, I'll have these hidden. And after XL, they can be flex. So they'll be present on the screen after really big screen sizes. But on smaller screen sizes, not a big deal. Like we, we had everything working great outside of just the little grow properties. Um, and I guess maybe some of this that's not acting consistent now because we have some other things at play. But at least the coloring is there. At least the coloring is there. So we need to figure some things out. Um, looks like we're going to need to make these with full as well. Actually, that has no effect. It's going to be the public layout that we need to adjust. But it is with full. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Maybe we don't want to do with full here. Let me, this is how I'm going to edit both. A little cheeky way there. We'll say with one half maybe. See if that kind of helps us out a bit. Maybe we don't even need one half. Maybe we just need one fourth or something. Like just, just literally have that content present on the screen. But obviously you can see there's, there's a, uh, There was a gap there, so um, that looks proper though. That looks good. And then at a certain point, it goes back to this. Nice. We got some weirdness here. So I'm not, I'm not stoked on the solution. I'm not stoked on it, in all honesty. Not stoked on it. But it's not a bad one. You know, it's it's not a bad one. It's just we now have some public kind of layout issues here. And um, I know some cheap workarounds I could do, but I, I just, I don't want to have it be this like cheap workaround all the time. I want it to be these like robust, strong solutions, right? That we just know are going to work on every single screen size possible, right? Um, but it's, it's looking good. It's looking good overall. And let's see, public layout. Do I need to say grow for the children? Is that what needs to be done? And then entail needs to grow the parent. Maybe I don't need this div even, right? Looks like it's a it's a extra div, so I'll look at that in the in-app layout as well, see if we can get rid of it. It's really just gonna be this top thing that's most important that we need it to be at the top of the screen, just like that. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that, folks. That looks great. Okay, and let me do this, see if we're looking proper here. It's a little bit clustered, but Oh, and one thing I did too behind the scenes without you guys was was I just um, popped these buttons into their own little templates like this and then just rendered them down here because it was just really, really fattening up the template. So um, I just made it really easy. Okay, if there's a user ID, show the off buttons. If there's not a user ID, show the login buttons. Um, yeah, so um, looking great, looking great. We don't want MY, we, we probably want padding. I imagine. And we probably don't want it on all screen sizes. Let's just double check. Oh, well, it doesn't look too bad actually. This is this is like freaking just just fantastic. You know what I mean? This is amazing. I'm loving it. I really am. And let me do padding four. See if we can get a little bit more space here. At least um Certainly this upper part, I do want just a little bit more padding away from the side walls. That might be too much. Okay, maybe maybe it's a padding, padding six situation. Yeah, that looks perfect. I like it. And let's see how it looks over here. Nice, okay. 
And I'm going to make this actually with, um, we'll make this one smaller. So I can have this spread out on the right side. I'm okay with that a little bit more. It's not a big deal to me. Okay, cool. Looks amazing. And we have our, our application in here. We got our user clerk icon in here, which is awesome. We found a solution for that. Went home, didn't mean to do that. Go to our dashboard page, our Kanban page, and our projects page. So the Kanban page, that's where I want to have some loaders and just make it this really smooth process. But we did accomplish a lot today. So let's, um, let's, let's write these down as task and completed task. Let's go to our models. And next layout, um, I, th I think we did it. I think we got it done. We got a public layout, we got an in-app layout, and we got um, just the traditional layout. So we're gonna put that in the done file. Um, grow and height properties indirectly. We, we got that done as well. That was something we wanted to do from the last one. Clerk redirect, got that done as well. Make landing page, done, nice. Blast through episode seven. That was an awesome episode. Um, oh, guys, I, I'm so bad at plugging myself, but in the links below, I have my software engineering program um, where it's curated content, similar to this, just a little bit more curated. This is more like bugging, debugging, kind of tracking how I'm building this and, and, and showing, you know, just learning stuff and stuff like this. But the, the course is actually curated content. There's a donate um, link for my Venmo as well. Um, and anything to donate, like literally helps the channel, even if it's a dollar. Um, and then I also have my, my other socials that, you know, feel free to follow me or connect on LinkedIn and stuff. I'm, I'm happy to meet people and, and, um, yeah, you know, that would be, that'd be awesome for me to meet some people. Um, so let's, let's kind of just take inventory of where we're at again. So task to do, we need to make some loaders, loaders for, um, base column component. Because you see how there's like nothing there and then it loads. Or it's, at some point it loads. Boom, it like pops up and loads. I, I don't want that. I want it to be a smooth, smooth, smooth experience. Um, I'll probably not have... Oh, that's that's so interesting. Okay, I, I realize I need to make this also one half here. Yeah, because that, that made it look weird. Um, oh, how can I do this though? Can I get away with one third? Maybe, maybe that's the magic number. One third on both of these, these padding kind of wrapper sides. Um, and we really just need it for these massive, massive screens. We don't need it for the little guys. So why did, why did we do large flex again? I, I forget. I forget. Why do we do that? Why do we not do XL? Because it really should be not here on this screen size. Yeah, this this should still be this. And then it just kind of just pops up on, on bigger, bigger, bigger screens, right? And we have this. Maybe, um, maybe I can grow this div and have this button exist at the bottom. When, when it's on mobile, just on mobile view, I just want it at the bottom. So user button, where are we at? I believe it's here, so we'll say div, and we'll say class name grow. Let's see if that does it, does the trick. Did I put it in the right spot? Oh, maybe I did not. Taskify, I think, I think it's right here. Oh, no, 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 it's not up here at all. It's gonna be down here, duh, duh, okay, cool. So we do want it to grow, but it's not it's not growing how we want. Or because there's a grow div below it. Let's see if that helps. No. But basically I want this to be at the bottom of the screen when people are on mobile. Um, I don't want it to be at the top like this. I want it to exist down here. So let's think about this. Let's See how one could do this, grow here. Oh, that did work. All right, so I need that, but then what, why did I need it the other way? 
doesn't look right this way. Okay, so we'll have grow there. And then um, it'll be hidden. And then on medium size screens and beyond, it'll be flex. And then from here, we'll say grow. And then medium, we'll say, what, what is grow? It's flex zero, right? Or flex one. So the opposite would be flex zero. So let's see. Boom, grow. Nice. Guys, this is looking like a professional web application. It looks like I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so go to dashboard. Let's see what we have. And we have here. Let's sign out. Should pop us out of the application. Sign in. Does it slide us out? Or it just goes to sign in. Okay. I'll have to look into that a little bit. I do want it to pop us out of the application. Back to the landing page. I thought we configured that, but overall, like amazing, amazing, amazing work. Let me go ahead and get add, get commits. Uh, let's see what bugs did we have. Uh, we did, we kind of did the layout stuff today, predominantly, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. I think I think I really think that's a very fruitful episode. Um, just recapping a few things that we did. We kind of did some edits, some just just tailwind edits on the landing page. Um, we did some clerk, uh, got that wrapper kind of clerk thing figured out that wasn't working on the routing side of stuff. Um, but it, it was kind of a big day on, on routing and, and architecture stuff where we condensed the file, got rid of that pages folder and um, built out the sidebar a little bit, got the wrapper. Oh, loading chunk failed. Uh oh, what did we break? What did we break last minute? Uh oh, uh oh. I'm sure it's just a sign in thing. Just maybe needs to load. So maybe we'll block the button from redirecting until there's a page load. I know that's kind of just a nitpicky thing, but um, but maybe we should actually disable the button, right? Until there's a user. So if there's no user, but why would it, it knows there's a user, otherwise it wouldn't render this page because this actually can't load unless there's no user. Um, so maybe not a big deal, but but yeah, so we, we got this figured out. So to have the clerk um, icon as well within our sidebar, which we had a problem with, we tracked some more tasks. We have our, um, our application architecture kind of kind of here where we can navigate between different uh, places. We could say the Kanban, the dashboard page, um, and the projects page should be loading. Kind of takes a second. Not sure if there's an issue with my computer just taking a while or what. Um, and then we also integrated that wrapper. So on bigger, bigger, bigger screen sizes, um, we, we're, we're handling it. The, the, the components aren't just keep growing forever. There's going to ultimately be some sort of cutoff. Um, and I thought we added padding. So these components shouldn't be touching the ceiling of these pages. So maybe we'll look into that real quick. We did add padding. So why is it? Hmm. Well, maybe something to look at for another episode, but overall, amazing amazing work i'm i'm really proud of the progress and and maybe this has something to do with the base columns themselves um potentially maybe if i just get rid of one third oh no no that's not going to be good we'll have to we'll have to look into this and figure out how to um kind of tackle the column components and i think dealing with the skeleton loaders and and i don't want them just just like jarringly like jump on the page i want it to be a smooth experience I know you can see them like how they like small load and it, it's just ugly. So um, we'll figure that out on the next one because we, we want it to look clean. Like, like this is the, the momentum we need where it just it's so pretty and clean and we have, you know, different layouts that look good. Maybe we can flip the, the layouts of this because right now it's kind of below, but it's unique. You know what I mean? Like I've, I don't think I've ever seen an application look like that on a phone. To be honest, um, it looks good. I don't know. I like it. So we'll uh, we'll think about things and um, yeah. But overall, I'm I'm loving the progress. I really am. And and maybe we'll do some back end stuff here shortly. I know authentication was kind of a big one. 
Um, gosh, we're getting we're hammering out tasks. I, I want to kind of yeah. So we'll we'll work on loaders for base column and maybe connect database so we can actually monitor these things. And then I already know some other to dos we need, which is going to be make functions. Um, for loaders, make functions or not for loaders, but for columns. So when we drop a like drag and drop this, and that's another thing we need to do is make these divs drag and droppable somehow between between stuff. So maybe maybe we're gonna have to end up making the Kanban its own page instead of having base columns that are smart columns. Um, potentially, I don't know how we're gonna have to do this, but make divs on Kanban draggable. So, um, but the functions for the columns will be fired off when I like drop in and on release on drop. Basically, when I put it in an in progress column, I'll fire off a function and say that that task now belongs in that column. It's now associated to this time status history, or excuse me, task status history with a new name, with a new timestamp. Um, and then another thing we need to do is make, so a, uh, what's it called? Make ID function for, um, for task. I'm sick of writing task. So this is gonna be connect repo and, and we'll need to transfer task, task into DB, into the database, right? So there's definitely still a ton of tasks that we need to do just associated just with the Kanban page. And there's, I believe, even more on the dashboard. So uh, no shortage of tasks and things to do, but I'm just, I'm just happy to consistently see progress and, and be building this and kind of, and taking it a little more serious, right? And building this out to be like, no, I expect it to have this kind of even me seeing this little gap right here, I'm gonna fix it right now before we um, pop off. But I don't, I want it to be this this proper thing. Why is it doing that? I don't like that. Maybe that's why I did large instead of, um, instead of Excel, I, th I think that's why. Must be, must be. So, um, but yeah, like little details like that are all important to me. I really want this thing to be, to feel like a proper application and, and perform like a proper application by the end of it all, you know? So um, seeing this front screen, I think I think says it all to me. We're just gonna hit hit the marks around this. Um, and let's, let's sign out and just see what we're looking like with the sign out, nice. Still looking good. It looks a little high for me and I think that has something to do with the padding we added. But these details are like, they're literally why I'm, um, I think I think it is the padding we're adding. So let me um, take the padding out, potentially. Is it the padding bottom? No, that, that is out. I don't know, that just looked funny to me for some reason why it was like so high. Maybe we'll need to adjust that as well. Um, not a mission critical thing, but certainly something I would I would prefer to have consistent and clean. So we'll we'll kind of polish up as best we can with everything. But let's go back to the home. Good to know the redirect is working. Yeah, something like this. I don't know why it just it seems off, but okay, cool. Awesome, guys. Great work. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Um, like I said, if, if you want to support the channel, there's links in the description below. And uh, if you want to connect, there's links in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care.